There are a lot of blue jays around here. All right. Well, this is another hardcore sustainable installment. I'm just going to try to give you a little update about what I'm doing and why I'm where I am. You all know all the shit that's been going down here in this country and around the world having to do with the coronavirus. Um, it's interesting because I remember, I think it was back in January, I was thinking that the media was overhyping this, but I just didn't know that much about it. Um, didn't know that it was so virulent and um, that it could potentially spread across the world like it has and this is changing everything dramatically very quickly and uh, this country has been totally unprepared for it and I can't say that I've exactly been prepared for it myself either. I spend a lot of time thinking about the future and thinking about problems like climate change but um, this was something that you know I'd heard about and knew was a possibility but um, hadn't really expected it to happen the way that it has and uh, we're actually just fortunate that it's not a much more deadly disease but we're finding out how um, the systems that you have in place to prepare for something like this and deal with it have a huge impact on the mortality rate and how many people actually die from something like this. But I think about the videos that I do about living a sustainable lifestyle and this is all about resiliency. It's all about being able to plan ahead and think about what might happen in the future and try to prevent the bad things from happening and prepare for the potential bad things that could happen either way. Um, I'm not a prepper. I've never been a prepper and I really kind of I just don't like the idea of people having such a negative view of the future and then stocking up to, you know, be stay alive while everybody else is suffering. Um, that seems pretty ridiculous and it's also in this mindset of like anti-government usually and I'm a very pro-government person. I think that um, we need governments to come in at times like this and help everybody because you have so many stupid people out there and then you have people that are just confused and don't know what to do and don't have resources and this is the great a perfect time for the government that's supposed to be funding science and research and funding preparation for things like this to be able to deal with them when they happen um, unfortunately the anti-government sentiment in our country has been rampant for the last few decades and that has gutted uh, any kind of systems that we might have had to prepare for something like this and we see the contrast with other uh, other countries uh, that have strong governments and have um, good government responses um, not just like the authoritarian China but like other places like South Korea and uh, and Germany and other Taiwan that were like prepared early and, th and thought about this problem before it came came about and they were ready for it and they were able to nip it in the bud. Uh, I don't know about Germany but at least they're going to do a lot better than the U.S. and I think the U.S. is going to be the worst example of what you could do uh, as a country and it's mostly because of the people that are in charge at the top who are not taking any action on a federal level. And so this is what we're dealing with. And, um, and our president is busy tweeting about celebrities while the country is facing the biggest crisis that it's had in 100 years or more. I don't know. I guess World War II was, was a bigger crisis. But um, it's been a while. It's been 60 years or something. You know, there's a reason why I like government. Um, I do recognize that it has serious problems in this country in particular. This is one of the few countries where muddied interests just have so much influence on our government and basically our government is for them and not for the people. Um, it would be much better if it was different but part of the reason why I like government is that I like it's a system that's uh, community based that like it's it's people collectively deciding what is best for them and then pooling their resources so that they can help each other particularly at times like this and it's the same thing at dancing rabbit it's like we've set up these systems and infrastructure that are all about living sustainably and trying to not only prevent the problem from happening in the future but to also be ready if it does so um, that's why I think government is important because it's sort of just a larger scale um, collective um, organization that 
is in the interest of people, people pooling their resources so they can help themselves. And everybody being an individual and doing things selfishly does not, does not solve these problems. I'm in Ohio right now, and uh, there's a reason why I ended up here. Um, I was in Florida and had planned to be in Florida until early April, and uh, I sort of foresaw the, this um, getting worse because I saw what was happening in other countries, and then I uh, heard about a couple of cases in Florida that were in the neighboring counties, and I thought, this is bad, this is looking bad, and it's probably going to only get worse. I was staying at International House, which is like sort of a community living situation with international people coming from all over, travelers, and I was like sharing dishes and sharing kitchen, bathrooms with people, and I foresaw that being a really bad situation to be staying in, and so I decided to cut my trip short by a few weeks and uh, start heading back to Dancing Rabbit. and. Uh, then I was looking at the news and hearing about how different states were responding to this and um, also thinking about where Dancing Rabbit is and how it's kind of isolated in the country. There's not, there's like one hospital nearby that's pretty small. Um, and I was sort of weighing the, the positives and negatives of uh, being far away from family and uh, being sort of stranded in uh, at Dancing Rabbit and although I do have all these great off-grid systems and um, things that you would think would help me be more resilient uh, facing a problem like this, um, I sort of weighed those with um, how the government was acting on a state basis, which in Missouri it's a red state and I don't trust Republicans and red states to do anything about this. I think they drag their feet, they're more concerned about the economy than they are about people, they're anti-government, so I don't want to be in a red state even though it's more spread out and there's it's a lot harder for um, the disease to spread. Um, in Ohio, it's not a red or a blue state. Right now there's a Republican governor, but he's actually um, handling this very intelligently and taking strong action and trusting scientists, which is what I think the best thing to do is. There's lots of hospitals around here. My parents are um, in their 70s and they are pretty vulnerable um, to this uh, virus. And so I'm just concerned about that and I wanted to be here to help them if I could. And uh, my sister lives nearby as well with her family. So. Sometimes, you know, we prepare for the things that are going to happen in the future, and I've got these off-grid systems at Dancing Rabbit. I've got, um, you know, my own water system, power system. I've got lots of food stored up there. Not that I'm, like, prepping for anything, but I just happen to have food, and I've got access to land, and I could be growing, starting to grow more food right now. Until the, some of the uncertainty is, has cleared, um, I think that this is the best place to be right now. So, we'll see if I made the right decision. And to me, when I think about this problem and how the causes and effects of it are so close together, like it's been a, a couple of weeks or a couple of months at the most that we've had between the time that we know, knew about it and saw that it was coming and, uh, and the actual hard effects of it, the devastating effects of it. And, um, it sort of lays bare to me the difficulty in getting people to do anything about climate change. Because if we can't even get the President of the United States to understand that in a, f a few days, things are gonna be dramatically different if we don't take some action, how can we make them understand that things are gonna be dramatically different in a, in a few decades if we don't take some action now? Like seriously, this is the short-sightedness of this mentality of uh, these greedy uh, politicians and billionaires who can't see, they're so concerned with making money and they can't see the economic impact. It's not just the societal impact, but like they can't understand that the econom economic impact is gonna be so great. Right now they're talking about, well, we can't uh, cripple our economy in order to do something about this virus. 
um, which they see the immediate effects of it and they're like, oh, well, people staying in their house is not good for the economy. Let's get them out and get them back to work. So then we'll be in a much worse situation because we'll have millions of people infected, millions of people dying and filling up hospitals. These people aren't going to be able to work anyways and the economy is going to crash anyways. So how can you not understand that? How do they not understand the like slightly longer term impact of doing nothing? It's just baffling and, it, and it's like, how are we ever gonna get these people to understand the problem of climate change if they can't even understand this problem that's like right in their face and the consequences of it are a few days away. Like they were saying this a week ago, hey, there's only a few thousand cases here. So what are you worried about? And then we're like, yeah, this is the way that it was in Italy about 10 days ago. And look at Italy now. <laughs> and now look at the US. This is exactly, we are the, getting to the point that Italy was 10 days ago, as far as um, hospital beds not being available, uh, these crunches in, in specifically in New York state, but it's like, this is crazy and it's gonna spread. It's gonna continue to spread around this country because not enough action is being taken, particularly in red states and by conservatives, uh, politicians. But I also wanted to mention how the economy has uh, responded to this, which I can't imagine a more fragile economy um, that we've set up this system that as soon as uh, the stock uh, brokers and investors on Wall Street start getting jittery about the future, we lose 30% of the value of the economy in like a couple of weeks. And then not only we, do we have this coronavirus problem to deal with, but now we have an economic problem to deal with as well. Like, who thought of this? Who thought of this system where at the time when we need it most, our economy falls apart? <laughs> and, and people praise this system as being better somehow. Um, and I don't see it. I mean, th we'd be better off if they just shut down Wall Street at the beginning of this thing so that nothing would happen. And then people wouldn't, like, 30% of the value of our economy wouldn't go up in smoke in, in a couple of weeks or in one week. But it, to me, it just shows how vulnerable our economy is and to set up an economy that's dependent on speculation like this and that the fears of something that's going to happen can devalue an economy so dramatically in so short a time, that's totally unsustainable. Like if we had a, an economy that was based on what's actually there, we don't have any less now than we had two weeks ago or three weeks ago before um, the economy lost so much of its value. And to me, how do you have an economy that doesn't value what, what things you actually have versus the speculative value of them? I don't know. It seems ridiculous to me, and it seems like there's got to be another way to set things up, like not have a stock market at all. I mean, the stock market is just there for investors to make tons of money. It makes no sense. I've gone through different stages of sort of like this thing hitting me in the gut, you know, the wondering the uncertainty about what's going to happen. Like when I was in St. Pete, I was like, oh shit, this is actually going to happen. And then I was thinking, I have to, I have to get out of here. And now I've kind of gotten used to that, but you know, we're still very much at the beginning of this, this and in the next couple of weeks, there are so many uncertainties and it's going to get so much worse. There's no way that it's not going to get so much worse and it's all up in the air. And things might seem okay now, and I don't wanna be negative. I hope that none of this happens. I hope things don't get worse. I hope we figure something out. I hope somebody invents an, a vaccine soon. But I think it's pretty much inevitable because of the way that our country is not handling this problem that it's going to get really bad here, like nothing we've ever seen. And that's, that's what worries me. That's what worries me. Um, there are some silver linings though, like I've been still appreciating it's amazing with all this stuff that's going on. This is only affecting humans really. I mean, um, nature is bouncing back. It's spring, there's flowers coming out, the trees are starting to bud. And uh, from what I understand also, 
in the absence of human activity, wildlife have been uh, creeping back into areas that humans came to dominate, um, which is which is really interesting and. Also, the, a lot of the um, pollution has stopped because the manufacturing has stopped in places like China and Italy and in the U.S. now. And so the Earth is having this opportunity to just take a huge breath. And like, I look up in the sky, there's not contrails anywhere. I find comfort in the beauty of nature and appreciating nature at times like this and seeing that at least for now, um, those things are intact and they're um, and they're still doing what they always do and if anything they're better off than they were before this happened. I guess I've been trying to find comfort in the idea of looking forward and thinking eventually we're gonna make it through this and we'll have learned from it and I'm still planning for the future I'm still sort of putting my energy into planning for things in the future even though it's incredibly uncertain as to what will happen but I'm also looking forward to the time that we can celebrate but it's a long road and there's a lot to get over to get to that point and I think it's gonna get a lot worse before it gets better we hope not but it just looking at the way things are going and the way that the incompetence is happening in this country still um, I think there's no way that this is not going to get a lot worse and uh, one other thing about you know that I'm sad about is the fact that so much of what I feel is like a sustainable lifestyle is based in community and having community with other people and sharing resources and this kind of situation um, community actually is dangerous <laughs> and that's something that was unpredictable to me and unexpected and so um, that's kind of sad but we do need to maintain some kind of community together if it's just uh, virtually and making connections with people because we can't be close to them um, but it's also like being compassionate towards other people and not hoarding not like being selfish at this time but like helping neighbors and um, and not withdrawing and, and fearing everything I'll keep you updated and I'll keep uh, I'll keep doing some videos I'll probably continue to try to make some videos I had some coming down the pike about like um, 13 years living in an eco village 13 years living in a tiny house so those are some videos that I can continue to work at even though I'm not um, at Dancing Rabbit. I've got some good old stock footage and so I've got plenty of time to work on those things. So hopefully we'll see those coming down the line. All right, well, uh, stay safe and uh, take care and I'll see you next time on Hardcore Sustainable. Mm -hmm.